I'm not sure what variety of lemon I have in my yard, but it might be a Meyer lemon. My lemons have an unusually rough skin with a lot of crevices, which collect a lot of dirt and what looks like a gray powder or a gray fuzz. However, when you look closely at that gray fuzz, you discover a graveyard of dusty, dead insects. Or perhaps it's their skeletons after they've molted. Some seem to have spider webs on them. They're too small for me to figure out exactly what they are. However, you can see that there are legs and faces on them. Some of them look like spiders, and others look like insects. I find these insect graveyards only on the lemons with deep crevices, but all of the lemons and oranges in this area develop tiny round blemishes on them. They look like discolorations, like this one. But when you look closely, you can tell that they're some type of insect. If you poke them with a needle, you discover that it is a thin material in the shape of a cone or an umbrella, and underneath is some type of insect larva. The larva is almost the same color as the lemon. And this one doesn't have any legs, eyes, or antenna. What does it turn into? And how did it get on this lemon? On the bottom of this creature is what looks like a long hair coming out of the center of it. Unfortunately, due to the shallow depth of field, I have to adjust the focus so that you can see it. As I move the focus in and out, you can see that the hair is above the surface of the insect and quite long. The side of the insect that you are looking at is the side that would touch the lemon. I suppose this hair is actually a hollow tube that it sucks juice from, since it must have some method of feeding itself, and I don't see any other method. It doesn't seem to have a mouth. The dark area at the 10 o'clock position seems to be its rear end. Here is another of those creatures, and this time, as I pry it off the lemon, some of the lining between the creature and the lemon can be seen tearing into pieces. As you can see, this creature is completely enclosed in a cocoon. The bottom material is very thin and delicate, however, and it often remains attached to the lemon when you peel these creatures off. This particular insect is in one of those graveyard crevices, along with other dead insects and their waste products, which are the small black balls. It's difficult to pry these off a lemon without destroying the larva inside. I'm using a sharp sewing needle, but next to one of these creatures, the needle looks like a pointed steel rod. Here it is on the needle. You can see that the creature has a cone-shaped covering on the top, which is exposed to the air, and underneath is a thin white material. The white lining material separates the larva from the lemon, and on top of the larva is a thicker, harder shell. Since these creatures start off very small, both the liner and the outer shell have to grow larger as the larva grows. Somehow that larva is expanding both the liner and the shell. Neither the liner nor the shell seems to be made of the silk that caterpillars spin for themselves. Since most of the top cone-shaped shells have concentric rings of different colors, I suppose each ring is created when the larva expands the shell by adding material all around the edge. Getting back to that larva I just pulled off the lemon, as with the first larva I showed you, this one also has a hair coming out of the center of it. If you watch it closely, you can see this hair wiggling once in a while. 
I checked a couple other creatures and they also had these hairs. So I suppose this is their feeding tube. I then pulled off another of these creatures and this time the bottom lining material remained attached to the lemon and the larva remained attached to the cone-shaped shell. When I flip it over you are looking at the side of the creature that was touching the lemon. This larva is much more developed and has eyes already. Here's a side view of that creature. The tiny black objects are its waste products. The cone-shaped covering is on the bottom in this view. I removed it from that cone covering and you can see more waste products. The larva has eyes and what look like wings. This one does not have one of those long hairs coming out of it, however. So perhaps this creature is finished eating and is ready to transform into a winged insect. Each of the cone coverings has a slightly different pattern of colors. This view is looking at the inside of the cone and here is the outside. It reminds me of an acne pimple. I cannot figure out what that material is. Here is another view of that creature and its cone-shaped covering with the light coming from a slightly different direction. I went back to the lemon and pried off another of the cones, but this time I found a creature that was even more developed. It had legs that were facing upward, touching the protective cone, so apparently they develop upside down with their wings against the lemon. As soon as I removed the cone, it started to wiggle and then it began crawling around on the lemon. I grabbed the camera and here it is a few seconds old. Its wings are a bit crumpled. The piece of lemon is sitting on top of an old hard disk and this creature quickly crawled off the lemon and onto the hard disk. It then spent time cleaning itself and preparing its wings for flight. This creature is a good example of how people can accidentally transport insects to other areas of the world when they travel. There are an amazing number of tiny insects, larvae, and eggs clinging to leaves, fruits, and flowers. Even when lemons and oranges are washed, some of these creatures will remain attached to the depressions on the surface. There are also lots of creatures at the junction between the stem and the fruit. It seems like the left and right eyes of this creature are slightly different, perhaps because I forced it to hatch too soon and its eyes are not completely developed. It took only a few minutes for this creature to clean itself and get its wings straightened out and ready for flight. It's amazing that such a tiny creature with almost no brain knows how to walk, clean itself, and prepare its wings for flight. After a few minutes, it was ready to crawl or fly away, so I put a piece of clear plastic wrap over it. And when it crawled onto the plastic, I could see what it looks like from the bottom. The yellow color makes me wonder if it would taste like lemon, but I'm not interested in finding out. I'm sure I've eaten some of these creatures when I've grated lemon or orange rind, but I'd rather not know about it.